Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the next part of this tutorial series, which is going to be to UV map this little dinosaur. In the last tutorial, we went over how to model it. So make sure you take a look at that. I'll leave a link below. And now it is time to UV map it so we can get it ready for texturing. If you're new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis, including Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter, among others. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started. I just completed this cute little model of this toy dinosaur, and now I'm ready to UV map it. So the first thing we want to do is go up here to the top right, and there's a workspace right now I'm in general. Let's go to UV editing, and this will pop up the UV editor, all of its tools, and my little dinosaur right here. Now, if you guys are find this distracting, you can also turn off the resolution gate, which is what I'd use to make a render. Now I can get closer. All right, let's take a look at the UVs. Um, I'm going to turn this little grid off so I can take a look at it. Uh oh, that's that's not looking great. And of course, all of these need a lot of love. So one of the first things you might want to consider doing is just trying UV mapping up here at the top and try automatic. And I'm not a big fan because usually automatic will give you a million pieces. Also, if you haven't done so, I I highly recommend that you center the pivot, delete the history and freeze those transformations so that if you do want to use um, automatic mapping, it will not take those transformations into consideration. Now up here at the top with these little scales, I'm not sure what they are. I'm not a dinosaur expert, so I have no clue what these little guys are, but they're cute. Automatic actually will work because I can stitch, stitch these things together. But let's focus on the body and then move from there. All right, so I'm going to be focusing on the body first and then the tail. And we only have a couple of options to UV map and we have cylindrical, planar, and spherical. I rarely use spherical. I usually have a tendency to use cylindrical or planar. And then of course we have automatic, which works sometimes. So what we wanna do next is select our faces. So I'm gonna to go to faces and I guess I already selected everything, but let's go ahead and deselect the pieces that we don't want. Now remember I am in uh, smooth preview. So if I hit one, that's actually what it looks like. Three is just a nice smooth preview. All right, let's go to UVs, cylindrical map. And you'll get a notice that I can close this projection because it is a full projection. And you're also going to notice that my seam is right here in the border edges is kind of lopsided. So what I'm going to try to do is click on this little T down here at the bottom and just slightly rotate it. Hopefully I can get a better cut. Um, I'm trying to make sure that that line is not all over the place, that it actually is as straight as possible. Now I'm still going to need some uh, to do some cutting and stuff like that, but that's okay. Now, the reason why I'm choosing to put the seam back here instead of maybe in the side, it's because my reference image, which let me bring back up over here, pink. There's no seams on the side. So to me, that means that the stitching is actually happening in the back, which I am going to do my best to hit, to make sure I get that. So I clicked on this little guy right here so I can hide my reference layer. Actually, I should call this reference layer because I was confused. <laughs> I'm like, which one? What's layer one and layer two? See, that that's what happens if you don't uh, label everything. Okay, let's take a look at the grid now. And the grid's looking a lot better, but there's definitely areas of improving. And we can also turn this little guy right here, which will show us um, that we do have some overlapping UVs. And let me hide my plane here. There's definitely room for improvement. So for the legs, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and select the legs. Like so, and I'm also going to cylindrical map. And it looks like I accidentally selected way more than I was supposed to. So that's one of the reasons why turning off this grid is actually helpful. So let's just go back into gray and let's make the selection of my little legs and somehow I keep selecting things that are not supposed to be selected. Um, you know, if you use the manipulator, it kind of tells you the center of all of your selections. So if I click on this, you'll notice that the manipulator moves. I use this manipulator to help me make sure that I didn't accidentally select faces that are not supposed to be there. So let's go ahead and cylindrical map this. Whoop. I'm going to move it aside. I know it's crazy at the bottom, but I'll take care of that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and 
Let's go ahead and grab these. That looks pretty good. U map cylindrical map. Just a little line right here. I'm going to see if I can grab, click on the little red T and I maybe slightly rotate the projection. And it's nice because now I can actually, instead of doing cutting and sewing and everything, oop, I missed a face. Chris is. Let's grab that face and try again. UV, cylindrical map. All right, let's grab that little T again, click on this and just kind of slightly rotate it so that seam is like that. So instead of cutting and sewing, I can actually rotate my projection to see if I can get a good cut. Now, what I could also have done was put, made sure that the seam is actually inside the leg, which I am going to do in a little bit. I could have done it in the projection, but I also think it's important to show how to cut and sew. Okay, now I'm gonna grab the body and move it aside. And this is going to be the tail. So with this, I am also going to UV map, cylindrical map, and I'm going to close it. But the projection is going up and down and my tail's more like going left to right. So click on the little red T, click on that little blue circle and just kind of slowly rotate it until you get a better projection. So you can see here that it's actually working. It's not going to be perfect because this is an organic shape, but it's better than what it was. Also, don't forget that you can also manipulate it here on the right. If you guys are having a hard time rotating it, you can in fact rotate it right here. This is a fancy trick. If you hold on control and middle mouse and drag on the number, you can actually change the rotation right here. So if you want to, you can go ahead and can move things around. All right, the tail looks pretty good. All right, so now that we've done projecting, the next thing is going to be to unfold. Now, if you guys are new to UV mapping, I highly recommend that you watch my series. It is for Maya 2018. However, the theories and all of the buttons are still basically the same. So take a look at that because it is really helpful. It actually goes down through every single step, including explaining every single projection. It talks about all the methodologies behind UV mapping. So check it out if you're new to this. Otherwise, feel free to follow along. All right, so next I'm gonna grab faces and I'm gonna take a look at my UV toolkit over here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on unfold and see what I get. So I'd like to look at my UVs. Now it's up to you if you guys wanna keep it like this, but I am gonna cut the disconnect the head from the body. So I'm gonna double click on this line, shift right click and go to cut. And now I'm gonna go to double, fake, uh, double click on my faces, click unfold, and I think that's gonna get me better results on my UVs. And then I'm going to double click on this one and also click on unfold, which will give me better UVs as well. All right. So what I'm looking at is deformation to see it is a circle. So, you know, we have to take that into consideration that spheres are really hard to UV map, but as long as they look okay. Okay. And the seam is also looking okay. So we're going to do the same thing for the legs. I'm going to double click and maybe turning off the grid for now, double click on the leg and click unfold. See how that looks like. And what I mentioned earlier is that I actually wanted to move that seam into the center or inside the body. So what I'm going to do is find out what edge that is. And then I'm going to kind of go down here and see which way I want to cut it. So maybe I want to cut it this way. I'm going to go ahead and shift right click cut for the people that want it the long way. You can always go over here to the cut and sew and do it that way. Then I'm going to select these edges and then I'm going to shift right click stitch together. Shift right click sew because now they're basically together and again double click on faces and unfold. So that's kind of like the method behind it. Not a big fan of having these things just floating around so let's go ahead and reduce those border edges. And again anytime you do something like that you should go ahead and click on unfold. All right let's see what that looks like. Pretty good actually. Moving on to the other leg, I'm actually going to cut the edges first. So I hope you guys don't mind that I go a little bit faster. Um, I just want to make sure that um, I accomplish this in you know a reasonable amount of time. And hopefully you guys know how to do this. So again, shift right click, cut, going to grab these side edges. Turn that off. Uh, shift right click, stitch together. Whoops, that did not work as well as I wanted. So that usually means that the cut is not all the way through. So here it is right here. Let's make sure we select that edge cut. Grab these guys over here. Shift right click stitch together and let's go ahead and unfold double click unfold. Grab these edges and let's go ahead shift right click sew. And it's up to you if you want to sew these two, but I think I'm leaving them at that. 
Double click, shift, right click. You can unfold here if you want to. So feel free to do that. Oop, let me get these guys as well. I might as well just get all of these. So again, my goal is to reduce border edges. Unfold. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay, um, so we have the body, we have the head, we now have to focus on the tail. So the tails is pretty good place, but I do need to do a better job cutting. Uh, I'm gonna grab that edge and I'm also going to go all the way down here, shift right click, cut, and then I'm going to grab the edges so they can move to the other side, specifically this one here, shift right click, stitch together. Grab those faces and unfold. Ooh, lost something here. What is this mysterious? Okay, no problem there. Let's go ahead and double click on these two, click on fold, and then we can find a home for them. So that would be, I guess, right here and here. So shift right click, stitch together. And again, select those faces, unfold. Let's take a look at that. And that's looking pretty good. All right, now for the head, I can show you a different type of cut. This is known as the football cut. Usually I do this for more complicated shapes like human heads, but let's see if it does a better job. I'm a little worried about the way it's distorted. So the football cut basically is you're gonna go up here and we're gonna, I'm gonna make it more like a Y. So the cut is going to be more like this. And then I'm going to shift right click, cut. And then I am going to sew these edges together, but let me make sure that I got everything here. Like these guys should probably stitch together. So let me go ahead and sew. It's gonna look a little crazy, but let's double click and unfold and see if that gives me better results. So this is known as the football cut. Up here at the top, I have some loose edges. So let me go ahead and sew those as well. I'm just gonna click on sew, there we go. So this is known as the football cut and it works really well with heads. So I have a video tutorial on that if you guys are curious. Let me go ahead and unfold. And let me see if that grid looks a little better. It does look better, um, especially more dis less distorted in the back. I could probably make that football cut a little longer, which I think I am going to do. So let's go ahead and select these edges here. I'm going to cut and I guess I'll cut this way too. So it's even shift, right click, cut. And then, oh my goodness, I'm going to go ahead and shift, right click. So again, once you're done with that, double click unfold and let's see if that distortion is less. So that looks way better than what it was before. Nice. I'm okay with the body. Let's move on to this one. So I already UV mapped this one or at least uh, automatic map, but we wanna avoid border edges. So let's go ahead and make some selections and stitch together. These guys are going to be sewn. These guys can also be, actually let's leave those alone. And then we're gonna double click on these guys here because I want to stitch together. Great, and then the mystery here, we might as well go ahead and all right, they don't have a home, so at least this one does stitch together. All right, let's go ahead and double click on these guys and hit unfold. Let's take a look at the grid, and that looks pretty good to me. Now here's the cool thing, and again, I'm gonna move this aside. Now the cool thing is that these are the same objects, so I get to transfer the UVs. Shift, select the first one, shift, double, shift select the other one, and they go to mesh, transfer attribute options, and then make sure you have component. I'm gonna reset my settings. You literally just need to click component and then transfer, and then the UVs transfer. So click, shift click, I'm gonna click on the letter G, which is my last command, which is transfer UVs. Then I'm gonna do that really fast. So again, I'm just clicking on the letter G, which is my last command, and my last command was transfer UVs. So now I have all of this UV mapped except for the arms and the little eyeballs. So the arms, we can definitely try to just UV map it uh, automatic and see what we get. Never, see, I, I never understand, I don't know. I just don't think it works. I, I'm just better off, you know, using like cylindrical. Um, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna click on that little red T to rotate it. And then, so my projection is more facing it in this direction, something like that. Again, click on that, if you lost it, no worries. 
click on the little red T, look for that circular manipulator and just kind of eyeball it so that it basically follows the projection of the object. So my object is kind of more rotated upward. So that's what I'm going to do. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. And if you want to, and if you're clever enough, this area here is where the seam is going to be. So if you want to, you can move it somewhere where you're not going to see it while you're in this projection mode. I'm going to hit the plus sign to give me myself a bigger manipulator, and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. So again, I'm just trying to get this projection to go a little bit uh, lower. So something like that. It's not perfect. Definitely not perfect, but it's getting better. It's a good start. All right, let's go ahead and focus on this part here. I'm going to double click on it. Unfold to see what I got. Actually, that's not too bad. Let me take a look at the seam. That's not too bad either, but definitely can avoid some of these border edges. So let me go ahead and turn off this. Shift right click, uh, sew, and sew. And again, double click, unfold. Let's take a look at that. And that I think is gonna be okay. All right, this one is the same thing as the other side. So select it, shift select, uh, mesh. Transfer attributes and voila, just like that, we have this object, though it does look like it got separated somehow. So let me see something here. The UVs are not together, which is odd. So that's an easy fix. Just grab UVs, shift right click, and I am going to just um, sew. Go ahead and stitch to get uh, sew. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just do it the old fashioned way, which is just Click on this, deselect the top, cut, and unfold. Um, all right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, this one almost looks like it's ready to be, is ready to go, but let's go ahead and go to UV planner mapping options. I'm going to choose camera, make sure keep image with aspect is on and apply. And then I'm gonna double click on this one again and unfold. Since I have that selected, I might as well transfer UVs as well. So shift click this one, then go to mesh, uh, transfer attributes. And there we go. So again, for what some reason, it, I think because it got flipped, the UVs are all weird, even though they look okay. I'm not really sure what the issue is here. It's a very interesting issue. But if I click on so, it does a whole, a whole slew of things. Actually, that worked relatively. Um, OK, so I'm just going to double click on faces and then unfold. And OK, well, that one worked out better. Makes me wonder about the arm. All right, I'm going to rotate it a little bit because I feel like it's not really sticking out as much. And we have our, whoa, our UVs. Let me delete all the history, freeze the transformations and all that jazz. And next I am going to click on another button in here, which you can find under transform. We can click on get and then set. And what it's going to do is that it's going to make sure the texel density is the same. So that means that they all share the same texture information. So the head and the, and the little scales and the arms all share the same amount of space in the UV maps. So let me collapse all this and I'm going to click on the button on not unfold. Oops. Let me go to layout and click down here and go to layout. And there you go. It kept all the information, which is great. Um, it is up to you if you guys want to keep it like this. Um, I definitely think one of the things that you need to think about as an artist is to fix it yourself. So all these scales I'm going to basically put together and gonna try to keep them um, about the same so I'm just gonna move them around see if I can squeeze them together uh, I'd like to keep them together because it'll be easier for me to texture these are my little eyes so again I like they don't take much space so I'm just gonna cram them somewhere else um, again my goal is I want to make sure these guys are facing kind of like the same the correct way so that means that I want to make sure my UVs are going up and down. It just makes it easier for me if you're going to take it into Substance Painter or, you know, um, or if you're going to take it into Photoshop, it's a little bit more predictable. 
Um, the tail looks okay to me, so I'm just gonna move it. The body is over here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and rotate it and see if I can squeeze it myself. I'm gonna turn the grid off. So again, what I'm trying to do is just make sure that these things are facing the way I wanna face it. So here's the head, here's the body, and then here is the tail. So it's e it will be easy for me to texture it this way. Um, this is the leg, so I'm, I'm happy with the legs there. And I'm also happy to move the leg down here. I might have to move it here. So let me grab these guys and just kind of move them up. These are the arms. I'll put them in a place in a moment, but let me just get the legs here. All right, cool. Let me check these guys, make sure they're facing a good angle so they don't look like they're going up and down. So it looks like this method is probably the better one. So I'm going to make sure that little line, actually that one looks okay. Here we go. Okay, here are the arms. Let me click on the arms and let's see, I can place them here. Again, the eyes can be anywhere. Uh, let's see if I can nudge this a little bit more to the left. Let me slightly rotate this just to give me some space. Again, I'm just laying it out myself so that I can texture it later. And I'm going to move this arm down. And whoa, let's get closer here. Let me just rotate this here, rotate this here. Okay, let me take a look at the grid really fast. Actually, that looks pretty good. All right, and now I'm going to cram everything up here. Oops, this one's outside of the UV space, so let me have to scale a little bit. Okay, that's okay. All right, let me just kind of move things around here. So this is going to be where the scales are. Okay, and the eyes. And let's click on this because anything outside of it will trigger the other textures. So this looks good to me. Okay, everybody, that is my super fast way of showing you guys how to UV map. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me select everything and center the pivot, delete the history, freeze your transformations, and our creature is now UV mapped. Okay, so hopefully then everything is looking good. I think that that's going to get me what I need. In the next video tutorial, we are going to start texturing this object. I'm going to texture it uh, using Maya. So it's not going to have any, might have a little bit of Photoshop, but in general, it's all going to be driven by just uh, basic textures. Um, cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned a trick or two. Uh, UV mapping is considered part of the technical part of Maya. So be patient with yourself as you guys texture this little guy or anything really, or UV map anything because it can be kind of challenging, but you know, it's also important so that you can get good uh, textures. If you like this video, please like and share. And of course, uh, hit the little subscribe button so that that is a message to letting me know that you're interested in these videos and that you want to see more. So please subscribe. And if you know an artist that might be interested in creating a little plushy toy, please share. That would be amazing. I know some of you guys are following along. If you are, I would love to see you in my social media. Please tag me. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook and Twitter. So if you want to tag me, I would love to see your work. It's always really exciting to see uh, people's pieces. Um, don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That's where you can find uh, free 3D models, eBooks, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating, and I will see you next time when we texture this little dinosaur. I'll see you then.